Electric cars, how much energy do they actually use in comparison to a fossil fuel powered vehicle? Well, a lot of people believe they use the same amount of energy. That's simply not true at all. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. The Driven from Australia has just reported that electric vehicles use half the energy of fossil fuel vehicles. Now, I've made a few vi videos on this in the past. Most of those were made when the channel was much smaller than it is today in terms of subscribers. I thought it was worth revisiting this by sharing with you an excellent article from The Driven. As US electric vehicle sales rise, more cars than ever are using the electrical grid to power up. It would be reasonable to assume that means the grid must now supply a vast amount of energy to those cars, but it actually doesn't take as much energy as you may think. And the grid, in fact, grids worldwide are becoming more and more clean. Coal use is declining. Um, the increase of renewable energy is growing at an incredibly fast pace. In fact, the fastest pace it has ever grown at, that's what happened in 2023. So the reality in terms of actual energy use of electric cars, a lot of people think they're gonna overwhelm the grid because they use so much energy, but the reality is that's not really true because they use far less energy than a gasoline burning vehicle. In fact, with the nation's current electricity um, use, an EV requires only about half the energy needed for gasoline or petrol powered internal combustion engines. And the same goes for diesel. US residents are burning about 8.9 million barrels of gasoline every single day or a little over one gallon for every person in the country per day. That's a lot of gasoline. That enormous sum has decreased by 5% from the nation's peak gasoline use in 2018. So how is it there's more cars on the road today and yet um, the actual amount of gasoline being used has gone down? Well, today's gasoline fuel cars and trucks are more efficient, but they do use uh, well, they waste around 80% of the energy that gets pumped into their gas tanks. 80% of that energy is wasted. A car heats up as it burns fuel to move pistons and propel the wheels. But cars do it very inefficiently. I mean, Mazda has said it's their goal to perfect an internal combustion engine. But it doesn't matter what Mazda does. They'll never be able to get it to build an engine that's anything more than about 25% efficient. In comparison to an EV, that's very low. The heat is not needed to move the car, so it is vented off, carrying away most of the energy in the fuel. This isn't necessarily a design flaw. It's simply a limitation of internal combustion. It's an inevitable part of thermodynamics. Burning fuel to create motion tends to be an energy wasting proposition. Electric vehicles operate with around an 11% energy loss. Some have less than that, some a little bit more, but on average, it's about an 11% loss. This means that most of the energy that goes into the car ends up turning the wheels. Because the vehicle doesn't burn fuel, there is no thermodynamic penalty for converting heat to motion. EVs also recapture energy during braking, which boosts overall efficiency. That's one of the things I love about EVs. Not only when you brake, are you recharging your battery, as long as you have regen in your EV, which almost all EVs have, you're also not using wasting heat and therefore um, wearing down your battery brake pads and your rotors, which costs you money. So it's like a dual saving. Even a coal-fired power plant, says the driven, is less wasteful than a car engine. Now, that might come as a shock to some, but it's actually true. The electricity that charges EVs has to come from somewhere. It would be correct to say that some types of electricity, of electricity generation are also grossly inefficient, especially coal. Now, I just revealed a video showing the second biggest coal company in the world is selling all of its coal assets, getting out of it in order to basically increase its mining of battery materials. Generators powered by coal, oil, and methane gas, commonly called natural gas, use a complex process burning fuel to create steam that spins a turbine that generates an electrical current. Here, the thermodynamic problem arises yet again. 
burning any type of fuel to make electricity ends up releasing the majority of the energy in the fuel as unused heat. Most of the original energy is lost. Despite the major energy losses, a power plant is still more efficient than a car's engine, especially if that power plant is using renewable energy. Now, of course, some are not. An internal combustion engine loses around 80% of the energy that goes into it. A coal burning power plant loses around 68% of its energy. You read that right. Coal loses around 68%. Thus, an EV powered purely by coal still uses less energy than a car powered by gasoline. Methane gas power plants are more efficient than coal power. So an EV charged with electricity from methane gas uses about half as much energy as a similar car powered by gasoline. But of course, it's not that simple because many EV owners use renewables. They use electricity that they get for free um, from their own solar panels, from battery storage, from renewable sources in their grid, depending on where they live or depending on their house, etc. Renewable energy obviously makes the equation much, much more favorable. The math gets more encouraging when you consider the efficiency of renewables. Not only do wind, solar, and hydropower reduce pollution, they also shrink the overall energy demand because there is no energy lost in the process of burning fuel to create motion. Less energy is needed simply because so much less is wasted in the first place. A wind turbine uses no fuel to spin and make an electrical current, so it doesn't produce emissions or waste heat. The process is so simple that there's basically not much opportunity for energy to be lost. A hydroelectric dam uses water to spin the turbines instead of air. A solar panel doesn't have any spinning parts. It just converts the sun's energy into electrical current. So an EV powered entirely by wind, solar, or hydro, or possibly battery storage from excess energy coming from other sources, chops off an incredible 77% of the energy needs of driving. These huge savings come from combining efficient electricity generation with an efficient vehicle. This is the ultimate win-win. Now there's another win-win here that people are not really recognizing, and that is recycling. Eventually, experts say probably mid 2050s, we will no longer need to mine materials for electric cars. There will be enough in the ecosystem and we can simply recycle the existing materials we already have. So how much energy can you save? Well, it depends, of course, on where you live. Electricity is generated from a variety of sources. Some are efficient and others are not. By looking at the specific blend of electricity sources generated in every country or every state, we can estimate how much energy can be saved by swapping traditional gasoline powered cars and trucks for their equivalent electric versions. The more efficient the electricity generation, the less energy is needed. States like South Dakota, Idaho, and Washington use mostly renewables in their electricity portfolios and little to no combustion based electricity. Thus, driving an EV requires about 70% less energy than a gasoline vehicle. At the other end of the spectrum is the example of West Virginia, where over 90% of electricity comes from inefficient coal. That said, many coal power plants are shutting down across the US and across many countries worldwide. So by the time you see this video, those figures could be different. Even though in the worst case scenario, an EV still uses around one third less energy than gasoline. An EV charged in West Virginia also reduces carbon pollution by 30%. On average across the United States, swapping a gasoline powered vehicle for an EV will lower the energy needed for driving by about 47%, a bit less than half. This number will likely improve in the future. But if you have your own solar panels, as the American government is predicting around 50% of the population will by 2030, then, well, this figure changes completely. Most of the time, you probably have to charge your EV for no cost. Besides lowering emissions and fighting climate change, using less energy overall, significantly less, is a win for land use, air and water pollution. And, you know, it's just better. It's actually cheaper. Efficiency is amazing because it benefits you. It means you're not reliant on fossil fuels. And it also means that for many days of the year, 
you may be able to drive for free. Now, there are some countries around the world and some states where electricity meets negative prices on the grid at certain times of the day. And as more renewables get built out, electricity prices come down. This is a virtuous cycle. And it will mean that eventually, almost all EVs will be driven using electricity that is clean, renewable, and is much more efficient than fossil fuels being used right now. And it comes from research from Yale University. Thank you for watching.